Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, CNW1015, and today I have a model review, a Joe Scale model review to be specific. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Franklin Mint uh, Southern Southern Railway PS4 Class 462 Pacific locomotive, and this is probably one of the most unique and probably one of the most flashy and detailed locomotives I have in my collection. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this model. So just a little background on the PS4 and this model specifically. So the PS4 was a 462, was a class of 462 Pacifics. They were built by Baldwin and the American Locomotive Company. Um, this one was specific. This one in particular was built by the American Locomotive Company. Um, they were built in the late 1920s for the Southern Railway for use on the Southern's uh, premier passenger train, the Southern Crescent Limited. The, yeah, the Crescent Limited, which ran between Washington, D.C. and New Orleans. Um, these locomotives were very unique and were most, and probably most well known for their um, green paints, their, their green paint scheme, which is probably, probably one of my favorite paint schemes on a steam locomotive. Um, and they were used on the southern throughout the end of steam and as a matter of fact there is one PS4 that did manage to survive it's uh, road number 1401 and it is currently on display at the Smithsonian in Washington DC so like I said this model was manufactured by Franklin Mint which was which they weren't necessarily known for manufacturing model trains as a matter of fact they've only done one other model train and that was a model of a J3A uh, Hudson locomotive off the New York Central which was uh, very similar to this in the fact that it's just very flashy and very, very, uh, yeah, just very flashy and detailed. Frank Lemon's more known for die-cast cars and other die-cast models and stuff like that. However, although this locomotive was sold by Frank Lemon and sold under their name, the locomotive itself was actually manufactured by Mantua, which I own a few Mantua models myself, and this is not this is something completely different from what you would expect from Mantua or any other locomotive brand. Another thing to mention: this engine was manufactured in 1989, making it not it's not necessarily young, but it's still still a pretty old model. But it still runs great for its age. So, yeah, like I said, it was manufactured by Mantua, and it's a very very unique from what Mantua would normally from what Mantua normally manufacture. It's more, this engine as a matter of fact, more, it's probably the closest prototypical locomotive, it's probably the closest to a prototypical PS4 as you can get without having to buy a brass model. So with all of that out of the way, I'm gonna take a look at the, take a look at the details and features of the locomotive. All right, so taking a closer look at the front of the engine, down at the very bottom here, you have the pilot, and also one thing I forgot to mention that this locomotive is all die cast. So everything you see from right here all the way up to the boiler and everything, it's all die cast. So yeah, we have our pilot down here. We have a knuckle coupler, which this is a dummy knuckle coupler. It does not work with other cars. I mean, you could, you could probably find a way to slide a card in there, but it's probably, I don't think it'd be worth it. Going along here, we have steps going up to the running board. We have another long step across the front here between these two grab irons. Continuing to go up, we have the um, we have more grab irons on the bottom of the smoke box door. We have our headlight and we have the locomotive's number plate and the engine's road number is 1396. Up here we have the headlight and if you notice here, there is a gap between the smoke box door and the headlight. This locomotive does not have a power to headlight, which honestly doesn't really bother me too much but there is no powered headlight. This is done just to make the engine look more prototypical. And continuing to go up, we have marker lights on either side of the smoke box. And then we have the locomotive's bell up here. Uh, funny enough, my bell actually fell off, so I glued it back on. So it still, still, it still looks correct, I guess. Moving back here, we have the, um, we have the iconic feed water heater, which is a pretty, which if, which is a pretty recognizable trait of the PS4. Most um, most other Southern locomotives didn't have feed water heaters like this. 
we have all the feed water heater piping on this side and then on this side there's even more feed water feed water piping we have the smokestack we have the um, steam chest and the cylinders down here and then going back over here we have the sand dome and then we have grab irons which run the length of the boiler on either side of the locomotive so and then I'll get more into the um, running gear and midsection of the boiler here in just a second so now looking at the middle of the locomotive you see here we have our all the drive gear we have the drive wheels and all the valve gear and connecting rods and saying honestly these connecting rods are very they're very thin like I said they're very thin very different from typical driving rods you would see of a locomotive from this era and when the engine's moving these just these look amazing they look amazing and so elegant so it's very, they look very nice when the engine's in operation. Uh, going up here, we have uh, the uh, reverse, reversing gear, air tanks. Uh, I imagine more bits of the reversing gear and more and more airlines. I'd imagine. Um, here is more of the uh, add-on grab irons running back to the cab. We have the steam dome. We have your pop-off valves over here. Don't know how well you can see it, but on this side you have the whistle. You have your feed line running right here, and then back here we have the um, we have your dynamo as well. Another thing I don't know if you noticed, but on all of the brake, all the brake gear you see down here, this is all separately applied as well. There's bolts, individual bolts right in there, which hold them together. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the engine. I've never seen, I've never seen another locomotive to have add-on brake gear like that so it just looks just looks very nice and moving back to the rear of the locomotive we have here the locomotive we have here the locomotive's cab with very nice lettering and pinstriping around the number and around the um, crescent limited logo over here we have the engine's road number 1396 um, done very nicely we have some blow down equipment over here we have the trailing truck which is also it's also die cast. Up here we have the roof. The roof is painted a kind of almost a red orange. It's almost it's almost like a very it's a very dark red, almost a maroon. And then we have a simulated cab, a cab roof vent, which does not open, which is honestly to be expected at this point. We have more grab irons over here on this side on the cab, and more grab irons here on the front of the tender. Do have kind of a representation of a um, to kind of have a small representation of a small drop plate here, the tongue. Um, it doesn't move, it just stays there. And one thing that did surprise me about this locomotive, I didn't know this until I purchased it, the locomotive actually does have cab interior details, so I'll try to show you that to the best of my ability here in just a second. All right, so that right there, that is what... So there is the interior of the locomotive's cab, which honestly, I was shocked to find out that this locomotive even had any resemblance of a cab interior. Today, it is pretty, uh, today a cab interior like that would be kind of considered kind of, kind of basic, nothing really special about it. But the fact that this locomotive was manufactured in 1989 and it has a cab interior, I think is just absolutely remarkable. Normally, locomotives like this would have the motor sometimes sticking out halfway through the cab. But the motor is mounted just behind this uh, simulated back head. But yeah, I just wanted to give you a look into the inside the engine's cab and it has a very nice cab interior. Uh, aside from that, there's nothing really much in the cab. There's no cab figures or anything like that, but it's still, still a very nice addition to the locomotive. All right, now we're gonna take a quick look at the tender. And like I mentioned, the locomotive locomotive is made out of all die cast and the tender is no exception it is completely made out of die cast construction uh, it has two three axle trucks so again very very tradition very faithful to the um, prototype see here it has all of the um, pinstriping around the around the tender tank we have crescent limited down here very nice legible and crisp we have southern up here also with pinstriping around it looking very nice um, in here, you have your coal. There is a coal load in here. You can't see it right now because it is kind of down in there. It's not ex it's not at the very top of the tender. I'm um, on the back here. Don't know how well you can see it, but there do there are simulated water fill hatches which don't open, and then there's some more 
grab irons and a ladder back here. I'll show you those in here in just a second. All right. Alrighty, we are now looking at the back of the uh, tender. Um, like I mentioned, there are some grab irons here, here, on this right here. We have a ladder which comes down from the top of the tank down to the frame here. We have 1396, once again right here. More pen striping around the rear of the tender, and then we have a horn hook coupler. Um, I've not looked into replacing the horn hook because I really don't care. I use horn hooks and knuckle couplers interchangeably here all the time, so it really doesn't bother me too much. And so yeah, that is the locomotive's tender. Alrighty, now with all of the details and whatnot out of the way, I'm going to do a brief uh, test demonstration of how the locomotive runs. So we're going to go backwards here. And like I said, you can notice the headlight doesn't come on because there is no powered headlight like I mentioned earlier. So, and even for a locomotive made in 1989, the engine, the engine is able to, the engine is able to crawl very nicely. This is, this right here is about the slowest. This right here is about the slowest I'm able to get the locomotive. Unlike most locomotives from the 19 um, from the 1980s, um, which normally most of them normally have a what is called a direct drive, which means the engine has a um, there's basically a can some kind of can motor or just some kind of motor that has a worm gear attached to it that is making contact with a gear which normally which directly drives one of the locomotive's drivers. Um, this locomotive actually does have a gearbox, which is down kind of down in here somewhere. Uh, it does have a gearbox, which I believe drives the center, the number two driver. So this engine runs very smoothly. It does, the locomotive does kind of tend to have a little, it kind of has kind of a little of a, kind of a shake to it almost. Not, not like a shake, more of like a wobble more so, but the... But you just kind of do have to look past that, and the engine is is a little loud, but that's normally uh, pretty standard for locomotives of the 1980s. They all run kind of loud, but this engine runs really smooth, and it can and it can pull a good it can pull a good several cars as well. So why don't I I'm gonna send the engine around the layout a few times so you can get some nice running shots of it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry that I have been uh, missing from the platform for, a, for essentially a few months now at this point. Um, I've been very busy in the past several months with other stuff pertaining to just my normal life and whatnot, but I do hope to continue making videos fairly regularly here soon. But I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video, leave a comment, something like that, I guess. I don't know. Um, hope you all have enjoyed this video once again. This is CNW1015 signing off. Have a wonderful rest of your day.